And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Authorities in Michigan have arrested 13 men with ties to illegal right-wing militias, including six men who allegedly plotted to kidnap and take hostage the governor of Michigan, Democrat Gretchen Whitmer. U.S. Attorney Andrew Burge announced the charges on Thursday. The FBI and Michigan State Police arrested six individuals charged in a federal complaint with conspiring to kidnap the governor of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer. According to the complaint unsealed this morning, Adam Fox, Barry Croft, Ty Garbin, Caleb Franks, Daniel Harris, and Brandon Caserta conspired to kidnap the governor from her vacation home in the Western District of Michigan before the November election. The men are accused of planning to take Governor Whitmer hostage, then bring her to Wisconsin, where they plan to put her on what has been described as a trial prior to Election Day. Seven other men, linked to a group called the Wolverine Watchmen, face state terrorism, conspiracy and weapons charges for plotting to storm the state capitol in Lansing, Michigan, with the intent of starting a civil war. Governor Whitmer has been the target of numerous protests during the COVID-19 pandemic for using her executive power to issue new public health rules to limit the spread of coronavirus. Governor Whitmer blamed President Trump for instigating the violent plots. In April, Trump sent a tweet reading, Liberate Michigan. Just last week, the President of the United States stood before the American people and refused to condemn white supremacists and hate groups like these two Michigan militia groups. Stand back and stand by, he told them. Stand back and stand by. Hate groups heard the president's words not as a rebuke, but as a rallying cry, as a call to action. When our leaders speak, their words matter. They carry weight. When our leaders meet with, encourage, or fraternize with domestic terrorists, they legitimize their actions, and they are complicit. When they stoke and contribute to hate speech, they are complicit. President Trump responded by attacking Governor Whitmer yesterday and today on Twitter. We're joined right now by two guests, Michigan State Representative Kyra Harris-Bolden and Russ McNamara, a reporter at WDET, Detroit's NPR affiliate. Um, Russ, let's begin with you. Can you just lay out this, what to many across this country was a shocking announcement yesterday? Yeah, it came as a surprise to many, but— not necessarily here in Michigan, because the state has a long history of militia and white nationalist ties. Uh, part of the Oklahoma City bombing, bombing plot was started here in Michigan. And so we go back to the mid-90s, and it kind of started there. It faded away during the Obama era. And then after President Obama was elected, we see the rise again of these white nationalists and militia groups. So the guys that were arrested the other night, they got together online in various groups, Facebook groups, and that caught the attention of the FBI. Plus, when some of the plotting started to involve the attack on law enforcement, somebody got cold feet and became a, an informant to the FBI and that gave them a better idea of what was going on. These guys are amateurs, essentially, but some had explosive training and knew how to make a bomb with shrapnel that actually tested it out. And they had tested out and figured out which bridge they wanted to blow up to help in the kidnap of Governor Whitmer. So it was fairly long in the planning stages, and they were set to go and take, take go through with their plot uh, right before the election. So when you talk Governor about Whitmer. blowing up a bridge, explain what we're talking about here, to prevent authorities to come to the aid of Governor Whitmer, who they also had talked about lynching. Yes, they, uh, they had, you know, the misogynistic undertones have been there all along. That includes in the protests back in April and May, 
lots of nooses, lots of, you know, Nazi imagery when it comes to Governor Whitmer. So that was always there. They wanted to draw law enforcement away from the governor in one plot. They wanted a direct assault on the Capitol building itself in another of the two plots. And talk about the weapons that they were charged with using, for example, an IED. Yeah, they they did have explosives. They wanted to, you know, cause as much havoc as possible, in part to draw away attention from their overall goal of kidnapping the governor, but also in causing death and destruction. You don't, you know, set up a bomb uh, to blow up and make it anti-personnel and not try to take out and kill people. Kyra Harris Bolden, you're a Democratic Michigan state representative. A l number of these men who were charged yesterday with terrorism were actually at your workplace, right, earlier, months ago, as they were taking over the Michigan legislature. Where were you? And can you describe the scene that ultimately President Trump would endorse? Yes. So, uh, thank you for having me this morning to talk about this very important topic. Um, it's very important to uh, note that this could have been prevented. Um, the Michigan House Democrats have been sounding the alarm since Operation Gridlock um, that happened um, in mid-April. And there was actually an Operation Judgment Day, of which they actually canceled session because they, I don't know, perhaps didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, the actual day that we were there, um, where the Capitol was stormed uh, by domestic terrorists, we know now, um, it was surreal. It was... Um, our offices are actually across the street from the Capitol. And from my office, I could see Confederate flags. I could see uh, Nazi uh, swastika paraphernalia. There were signs that say, tyrant get the noose in, ref in reference to our governor, Gretchen Whitmer. There was actually a truck with a noose hanging off of the back, a life-size noose. And so it didn't take much to know that these threats had nothing to do with the governor's um, so-called lockdown or stay home, stay safe orders. Um, this was a very uh, dangerous situation um, that we were entering. And I will also share with you something that m many people probably don't know. They were actually not allowed in the Capitol until minutes before we were called to vote. So, um, And explain when this was. Yeah, so this was uh, mid. Um, this was mid April, and so kind of the height of the stay home, stay safe um, orders. And obviously, there was a lot of angst. Um, there were a lot of businesses closed. Um, but you know, I think it was just also kind of used it as an excuse um, to uh, to 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 rally. We also saw a lot of Trump flags. Um, which um, seemed out of place for a, a rally against stay home, stay safe orders. Um, but this happened in mid-April at the, at the height of COVID. Um, so we were not, um, or visitors were not allowed in the Capitol building um, until minutes before we were called in to vote. And so it was a purposeful action that we would have to be confronted with the same people that were armed, that were um, that had Nazi paraphernalia, that had nooses, that had Confederate flags, and fortunately, our gallery um, was closed, but the Senate wasn't. And you may have seen a picture going around the internet where it was actually confirmed that two of the men arrested had previously been standing armed above the Senate chamber, and that picture was taken by Senator Paul Hankey. Some of the senators actually have bulletproof vests. Um, because of this situation. Um, it, is, it was not safe. And I will also note, it was during the height of COVID, and many of these people were not wearing masks, um, and they were crowded um, in our state house. And so that added an extra layer of um, kind of a terror uh, for us. We were dealing with a global pandemic, and we're dealing with what we know now to be domestic terrorists. So, in April, that's when President Trump, the time you're describing now, tweeted, liberate Michigan. And yes. then, in May, he wrote, these are very good people. I want to go to Washington Congress member Pramila Jayapal.
who was questioning Attorney General William Barr during a House Judiciary Committee hearing in July about the threats to Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. It was a contentious exchange. Jayapal noted the discrepancy between Barr's militarized response to Black Lives Matter protesters and armed white militia members who displayed white nationalist symbols and threatened Michigan's governor. On two separate occasions, after President Trump tweeted, liberate Michigan, to subvert stay-home orders to protect the public health of people in Michigan, protesters swarmed the Michigan Capitol carrying guns, some with swastikas, Confederate flags, and one even with a dark-haired doll with a noose around its neck. Are you aware that these protesters called for the governor to be lynched, shot, and beheaded? No. You're not aware of that? I was not aware of that. Major protests in Michigan. You're the attorney general, and you didn't know that the protesters called for the governor to be lynched, shot, and beheaded. So well, obviously you couldn't be concerned about that. Well, there are a lot you, of protests around the United States, and uh, on attorney June 1st, general Barr, I was worried you seem about to the District be engaging of Columbia, in which is federal. protests in certain parts of the country. You're very aware of those, but when protesters with guns and swastikas I'm very, and I am aware of, flag, of protests. Excuse me, Mr. Barr, this is government. my time, and I control it. <clears throat> you are aware of certain kinds of protesters, but in Michigan, when protesters carry guns and Confederate flags and swastikas and call for the governor of Michigan to be beheaded and shot and lynched, somehow you're not aware of that. So that's Congressmember Pramila Jayapal questioning Attorney General William Barr. Remember, the Attorney General is in charge of the Justice Department. It's the FBI, the U.S. Attorney, and state officials who've now charged 13 men with various domestic terrorism charges. I want to go back to Russ McNamara and talk about the groups that are involved. This is not just a disparate group of individuals. We're talking about Bugaloo, and we're talking about, well, tell us about um, this group called the Wolverines, the— Yeah, the Wolverine, the Wolverine Watchmen. Watchmen. Yeah, and uh, they're just part of one of the many groups that have popped up over the last decade or so. Uh, even over the weekend, uh, a man involved in the anti-government Boogaloo movement, uh, Eric Allport, was shot and killed by federal agents in a parking lot of a suburban Detroit restaurant following a shootout. Uh, Robert Snell, the great Detroit news reporter here, figured out that he played a small role in the disastrous Ruby Ridge standoff, but he was still active within the militia and anti-government movement. So we've seen all of these individual groups pop up over the last decade, partially fueled because it's easier to get together uh, via social media. So whether or not it's a private Facebook group or an online forum, these guys are getting together. But if you look at these guys and their trail on social media, uh, they are a collective, but they're fairly well fractured and they have their own ideals and ideology, and they've got piecemeal equipment. Uh, their tactical gear is not anything that you would consider professional, but their firearms, for the most part, are. So they may be a sort of um, unusual amateurish group who's training heavily, and apparently we're going to take these guys to Wisconsin, uh, meaning the governor to Wisconsin, to stand trial. But the attorney general of Michigan talked about this just being the tip of the iceberg. And Democratic Michigan State Representative um, Cairo uh, Harris-Bolden, that's where I want to ask you about Trump's lack of response here. Uh, William Barr's lack of response here, and what is the response of the Republican state legislators now for the arrests of these groups? Because the attorney general of Michigan said this might just be the tip of the iceberg with more heavily armed, organized men, part of these gangs, um, who might be preparing for Election Day. Well, I will share with you that just yesterday there was a rally on the steps of the Capitol uh, where you could see Trump flags. There wasn't the same kind of Nazi uh, paraphernalia and um, Confederate flags. Um, but this is on the heels of 
of the news breaking about the kidnap and murder plot against the governor. And there is a kind of similar rally. And I will say that the Senate Majority Leader, uh, Mike Shirky, said to spoke at this rally and said that there this is no time to be weak in commitment to freedom. That was his words uh, to, to this group that had gathered. Um, nothing about uh, the uh, kidnap and murder plot uh, about the governor. Um, now, we did see a couple of Republicans speak out and, you know, say that they are glad that the governor's safe and there's no place for this in this state. But again, this could have been prevented. We can simply not allow guns in the Capitol. Um, that has been, uh, we've been sounding the alarm as Michigan House Democrats uh, since way before um, this situation has happened, um, and to no avail. Um, I've uh, read reports that some of my Republican colleagues have said, um, if there's a law that would have prevented this from happening, let me know. Uh, we can simply limit or not allow guns in our capital, and that would make a huge difference. Um, but to suggest that there's nothing that can be done I think is um, incorrect. Well, you have President Trump uh, not endorsing these uh, indictments yesterday, but calling for the jailing of his political opponent, uh, Joe Biden, as well as the former president of the United States, uh, Barack Obama. He was doing this yesterday, uh, speaking on Fox. And I'm wondering, as an African American representative in Michigan, uh, Kyra Harris Bolden, are you getting more security right now? Uh, how much security? is now surrounding the Michigan governor. Um, so the Michigan governor has always had, you know, her, her detail. And I want to take the time to thank the FBI and the police uh, that thwarted this plan. Um, individual legislators do not get protection. And as I stated before, our offices are actually across the street from the Capitol. There's no secret entrance. Um, and so we typically have to walk through whatever rally, protest, demonstration is on the Capitol lawn. Um, and I will say that as a black woman walking past that event that day where there were heavily armed and now that we know domestic terrorists and going in the back door of my place of work was incredibly demeaning to see Confederate flags and nooses as the great granddaughter of a man that was lynched. Um, I, it honestly brought me to tears. Um, I, I, to, to see the point that we have gotten to is truly heartbreaking. And I hope that, you know, instead of just words, um, we actually take action to make sure that something like this doesn't ha actually happen and that we don't carry and stoke the flames of, um, of hate in Michigan. I want to thank you so much for being with us, Democratic Michigan State Representative Kyra Harris-Bolden and Russ McNamara, reporter at WDET in Detroit. Of course, we'll continue to follow these issues. And again, President Trump, even as these indictments came down, continued to attack Governor Whitmer repeatedly yesterday and continues that attack today. Shortly before we broadcast this morning, this year's Nobel Peace Prize was announced. We're going to go to that in a moment.